Welcome back to doing myself garage. I still haven't cleaned up that workbench yet, um, but my brakes started dragging. Well, not dragging. They're at the end of their life, which I kind of knew when I was working on the uh, water pump and stuff, but I figured they'd make it the winter. Well, they made it to mid-February anyway, so let's get those changed out. Um, also, a little update on the GTO. Um, do not leave decorative stickers on your car. These are just window clings. But, uh, yeah. I took them all off this side. And one of them pulled a little hard. And yanked the paint right off. This is a single stage paint. Not a, uh, not a base coat clear coat. So, it kind of is what it is. I'm going to be doing the body work here in the next year or two. I've got a bunch of spots that are, you know, messed up and chunked out and whatnot. Uh, the concentration on the car was getting the mechanical stuff done so it was drivable and reliable. Then I'll worry about the body. So uh, in the meantime, I have to get to work. So let's get these uh, wheels off of here, swap out these brake pads, and... Uh, then uh, I can start making a list on the GTO of getting some actual stuff done that I want to do. Picked up some Duralast ceramic brake pads from my local parts store. It's AutoZone that I typically go to. And uh, probably a lot cheaper on Rock Auto, but I didn't have time. And it doesn't hurt to support a local business once in a while. So they weren't horribly expensive. Let's get this wheel off of here. I already chalked one of the tires in the back so she doesn't roll. Remember on a front wheel drive, it's a, when you put it in park, that's what's holding the car in place is the front wheels. So I chalked the back wheel on this car. We'll do one side at a time. Let's get her done. <laughs> rust here in Minnesota. It usually takes care of that. All right, and yeah, this one's in good shape. There's no grooves on this side anyway. I got this vacuum plate all the way around. Anyway, um, pretty easy to do these. Let me bring you in here a little closer. Okay, got you a little closer. So there's just going to be a couple bolts that hold this. Uh, there's one here, and there'll be one on the bottom. And those basically just hold the caliper to the, to the back of the spindle here. And then that's what holds your whole brake assembly. Now, some newer cars have a piece right here. And you just take that off, and the brakes come out, and you put new brakes in. Uh, you know, nicer setups. This thing's 20 years old. Uh, they hadn't come up with that design yet. So I just gotta take these bolts out here and we'll get this uh, get this off of here. Don't recommend doing this. Get tools if you like. But it works. If I had been planning ahead, I could have hit this stuff with uh, some penetrant oil. I wasn't too worried about it. I don't know why, really, because no reason it shouldn't be rustier than heck. So anyway, there's the top bolt loose. Let's get the bottom bolt loose now. Ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. Ah. <sighs> 
All right, so now it's just a matter of backing those out until this falls off of here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. So I've got, this whole thing's kind of loose now, okay? And you're like, whoa, wait now, oh, that's loose. Well, that's held on by the lug nuts. So I got the bottom bolt out. Here's the top, top bolt. And you want to avoid hanging this on the, uh, on the brake line. When you take this off of here. Oh, you don't want to support the weight with that. There we go. And uh, there we be. And yeah, those pads, <laughs> you'll see them here in just a second. So I'll just kind of pop this one out. Mm, should just pop on there. I've got these little clips that are for anti-vibration. And, all right. Yeah, don't hang it by the, by the lines or you'll be replacing these. They are not that strong and usually by the, you know, you're doing a brake job. They're a little bit older already and a little bit brittle. Let me grab my screwdriver real quick. <coughs> Pop these pads out of here. And this one. Okay, got this one out of here. I thought I had it out of there, yeah. Holy cow. I, I was, yeah, this one has a little bit of material left on it, um, but it's the, it's the right, it's the passenger side that was the side that was yelling at me, that was grinding. So I imagine we're going to find absolutely no uh, material on that side at all, at least on one of the, one side of one of the pads. There we go. And I don't believe the pads I bought came with these retainers, with these anti-vibration things. They were the cheapest set I could find. So be careful depending on what you bought. You might have to reuse those. Yeah. Those are worn down. These must have been a ceramic too. They're awfully shiny, but they got a little bit of pad left on them. Not much, but a little bit of pad. So left side was still good for a little while, but it's definitely that right side that was low. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to pop the hood. I need to push this piston back to give me more room for, because you know the pads are gonna be thicker. And I'll show you how much thicker they're gonna be. So this piston right here inside, and yours might have double pistons, triple, quadruple. Sometimes there's pistons on both sides. Uh, it's just a single piston, but I have to push it back um, in order to get room for the new pads. So what I'm going to have to do is get a C-clamp in there, and then I have to open up the brake uh, fluid reservoir. So when I compress that, that the fluid will go back up inside. Okay, I'm just going to take the cap off the reservoir here. And it's just a little bit below full. So there should be room in there for the fluid to go back up. It won't be a lot of fluid, it's just what's in the lines uh, in order to move that piston back a little ways. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Let me grab my C-clamp and see if I can compress this. All right, so I cannot find my larger C-clamp if I have one. Now you notice when I pry on this, that piece moves. Okay, that's supposed to. If that doesn't move uh, freely, then you need to lube up these slides. That's the part that compresses the brake pads. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get in here to pry on this. And uh, it uh, <laughs> can be a bit of a challenge. The C-clamp is the best way to do it if you can. The other option is just to pry which is what I usually end up doing. Now, I can't pry on this because this will just slide out, okay? This is made to slide. And then you'll hit the end and your, your piece will come off the, 
so come off the pin so you don't want that so you need that leave that back there um, you need to be able to compress this um, usually this doesn't have to go back all that far this is a rubber piece here this doesn't have to go back all that far to get the brake pads obviously just the thickness just has to go back the thickness of what wore off these pads okay so quarter half an inch at the most gosh darn it I really wish I could find my c-clamp let me try that other one again maybe that was right because swore I've used this before sometimes it's a matter of fishing it down in here There we go. All right. And you can usually pry on the housing fairly safely. I don't know why they didn't work the last time I tried this. Just a couple minutes ago. I probably didn't have the slide back where I have it now. And this should compress easily, okay? If this doesn't compress easily, then there's something else wrong with your caliper, and that might be why your brakes wore out, if they wore out, you know, seem like they wore out fast on one side. Okay. Now, this is only going to compress so far before I hit this. This is going to bottom out, so i got to have something on here again. doesn't hurt to use your old brake pads or a piece of metal or something. Compress that. Whatever you can get in there. Not going to be a lot of room with this particular caliper, that's for sure. Or with this C-clamp. I thought I had that back all the way. There we go. There we go. All right, you're, I'm going to be in the way here, so I'm going to turn you off and I'll come back. All right, apologize. I'm trying to show as much as I can here. So these pads have these anti, or the anti-wear, they have these wear bars that just clip on here it goes the short end goes to the side with the pad and what that does is when it gets down to the close to the bottom of the pad it will hit the rotor and make a horrendous squeal before your pads are actually metal on metal um, it's kind of a safety thing because obviously you don't want your brakes to go out completely but a little squealing and a little little wear on a part of the pad that's or the rotor that's not getting used, no big deal. But it definitely lets you know that your brakes are pretty much worn out. Okay, so I did manage to get this pushed back. I used the old pad and I was able to get the clamp in there. Hopefully, I went far enough. The old clips are still in here as far as the the alignment clips these did not come with them some kits do most of the nicer kits that I buy do come with those but I bought the cheapest set I could from the local parts store because this is just my commuter car really not hauling anybody important in here except me so I put a lot of miles on so they're still safe because I'm putting new brakes on, but I also didn't need brakes good enough for rally racing. Okay, come on, get in there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling to get these things in here. Sometimes if you get one side in a little too far, it can keep you from getting the other side in or start from the other side first. Whatever works. So I'm going to start with this side first this time. And they should just drop in there. But there's a pretty tight tolerance because they don't want them chattering. And if you've ever had brakes that squeal before, usually it's because these these this metal piece in here, not the wear piece, these other metal pieces, 
have rusted off. And when you hit the brakes, you get the squeal because pads are rubbing. That's what they do for a living. All right. All right. In all the years that I put brake pads on, I've never had a, a pair fit this poorly. I ended up grinding just a little bit off of just the ends of the tabs. Otherwise, they wouldn't fit. As soon as I did that, I mean, I didn't take much off. Basically, just the paint and the coating. And then now they now they fell into place. So now, the trick here is, is this has to be at least as wide as your rotor, or you won't get it back on. So, as I mentioned, we had to compress that enough to make up for the wear in the pads. And so now, I should be able to put this back on. And it's a little bit of a little bit of a trick here. Make sure your pad is seated. And when you're playing with it, this, especially this outside one, likes to come out. So you have to be careful. But I think I got it close enough. We're going to slide her back on here. Well, I was being really hesitant about grinding on them. But this one was just fighting me. And so once I figured out which tab was dragging, I ground just a little bit off, dropped right in. I should have done that to start with. Okay. Now that I've sufficiently bent up the plate here, it'll all work. Not a problem. It's just a rusty old car. Come on, get on there. Oh, don't want to leave this hang. Oh, this is not one of my best videos, or maybe it is my best video because I'm struggling more. I don't know. There we go. Okay, so obviously I'll have to bend that cover back when we get all done here so she's not scraping and scratching. You can put anesthesia on these if you want. I'm uh, telling you right now, this is probably the last brake job for this car. Well, I only have 160 on it. I might get some more miles out of it. We'll see. Okay, now the hard part. Lining this back up. Oh. These actually line up pretty good for me normally. But today, fortunately I'm not doing this out in the snowbank or at 40 below. I'm doing this in a nice, well, heated garage, but I'm not heating it today. It's Super Bowl Sunday. I think that means there's a football game on. I don't know, something like that. Somebody at work told me something about it. Okay. Bottom one started? No. Nowhere near. Oh. Nope. <laughs> oh. Oh, it might help if the bolt goes through the through the backing plate first. I wasn't filming this would probably go super easy all right I did get that one finally now I gotta feel around on the back back here and get this one in same thing should have gone through the I think I make sure this isn't scratch scraping here either we'll spin this before I break it down completely 
Okay. Am I through the backing plate? No, I don't think I am. Try not to pinch my finger. There we go. Now I'm through the backing plate. And if you're not sure, take pictures of stuff. Um, don't see me taking pictures. That's because I'm doing video. It's even better. Huh. I had to go back and watch my own videos on the GTO. Uh, the main one was the, uh, the pulley system because my car was a hodgepodge of projects that had an AC pulley on it. So I took that off. It's an auto. It's a 1970 block. I think, like I said, I think the car had AC on it when it started. Not oh, worth the, the car where the engine came out of. My car did not have AC. I still I believe I'm missing a bracket up on top now that I looked at some other cars. So I have to look around. I might have that bracket and I took it off and forgot. It's all the little stuff. So take photos, take video, whatever you need to do to make sure that you are putting stuff together correctly or you can remember how you took it apart. There's nothing worse than getting something. Let's say I got all this together and I forgot to put this uh, backing plate on here and it was dragging or something, you know. Well, I have to take it all apart again. And that's <laughs> as rewarding as it is to work on your cars, having to do it multiple times is not fun. Okay. Tight. I'm sure there's a torque spec on those, but torqued. How'd you get way over there? And yes, I do have a jack stand under here. I didn't at first. Oh, I'd have to put it in neutral to see if this spins. Probably not a bad idea. Let's put the let's put the wheel on there first, though. I can put her in neutral. See if she scrapes. Yep. <laughs> it's that stupid. Uh, it's that stupid. Uh, what did I call it? Oh, back. In the Oh yeah, she's dragging way down here. I guess I didn't pay attention when I did that. Should have paid more attention, Patrick. Wouldn't have to take the wheel off again. Spend her out of the way. There we go. No scraping now. Now we can put her back on. If you're doing aluminum rims or alloy, be sure you do your torque spec on that. Steel, it's not that big a deal. Steel, it's not that big a deal. I'll hoe it and take it out. Steel, it's not so bad. Really don't have to worry, you know, it, it's, it's not a big deal. But on alloy, don't want to mess with those. And then you want to retorque them after 50 to 100 miles also. So there we go. There'll be a little bit of drag on the pads um, until you've used them a couple times until they find their center. But there we go. I also want to show you up here. I don't know if you can tell, but that level 
came up a bit because I have added brake fluid as the pads were wearing. So I'll go do the other side and then I'll be back. All right, just got one of the things I wanted to show right away here. So this was the uh, driver's side, worn down, but there's still just a little bit of pad there, but not much. And they're both about, both about the same, maybe just a little bit more on this one. I don't know, I don't remember which one was the inside or the outside on that one. This one here, this is the, the passenger side. You can see, see this part here where it's metal? That's actually part of the, part of the backing plate. The, the pad is completely gone here. Now you look at the other one, same thing here. The other side is just a little bit thicker. That's actually the inside. I was looking at the caliper. Now, both sides of the car are worn pretty close to even. I am just a mess. Both sides are worn pretty close to even, so I'm not concerned about there being a caliper that's uh, sticky. Um, but I did have uh, my old Grand Am that I had, um, that had, had that, the left front one, I believe, wore out right away. Because uh, it was sticking and dragging all the time. It wasn't it wasn't releasing and going back So these are worn for pretty evenly uh, I'm gonna get back to get those uh, ones back on the other side of the car All right, we made quick work of that My reservoir is over full But the pads have got to go down a little bit because they uh, They're pressed out So we're just gonna screw that cap on there color good she might be a little over full on brake fluid for a little while that's okay there all right I'll take her off for a test drive but that's gonna pretty much do it uh, thanks for following along with the channel liking subscribing all that great stuff really helps me out I'm still a pretty small channel like I say I will be doing some more work on the GTO here pretty soon. Uh, as soon as it starts warming up and I can work out here without having to run the heater. Uh, you know, stuff that I'm working on, I can test drive, things like that. But uh, we'll be getting back to the GTO very soon. Thanks again. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.